Right, uh, we're just going to do a quick update on the Targa Twin. Um, if you've been following this online or in the magazine, just to give you a bit more information about where we're up to with the shed and with the scooter and with the uh, paperwork we've just gone through. And then in some of the other videos, if you want to have a look at those, we're going to have a look at some of the components and parts that will be fitting to this. So I uh, purchased this scooter through Sam at lambretterfinder.com. Um, the reason I used him is because I've used him before. Some people are dubious about importing scooters from abroad, but I've done a lot of work with Sam, and I know he's a, a, a knowledgeable scooterist and a trustworthy guy, so I didn't have a problem buying from him. If you have a look at his website, uh, you'll see that he lists images and descriptions and prices of all his scooters. Those prices include delivery to the UK, and importantly, for registration purposes, um, a VAT invoice with his VAT details on. So, just to talk about the registration part of this process, um, this is an important piece of paper that he provides you with, because what you can do, literally the second you receive your scooter, is go and get your Nova number. You need to alert HMRC um, within 14 days of the scooter arriving in the country, um, using this paperwork, all you do is go to the HMRC website, um, they'll want a few details from you, your name, your address, the scooter make and model, frame number, engine number, mileage, that sort of stuff. It's simple. As long as you fill in all the boxes, um, you get to the end of that process online, it's free, and um, you get presented then with a Nova number, which I just print off on a separate screenshot, separate piece of paper. So you've got your, your invoice from, from Sam for the import of the scooter, and then your Nova number to show that no VAT is further applicable for the machine. Um, once you've got those two bits of paper, to move along on the registration process, I then go to Pete Davis at the British Lambretta Archive um, and get a dating certificate. They're seven quid and it lets um, the DVLA know when you apply for your um, V5 document what the year is, what the make is, what the model is, and it confirms that from an authentication point of view. Um, with those bits in hand, it's just then simply a case of filling out the V55-5 document, um, which is going to be sent off to the DVLA, um, presenting them with a photocopy of your uh, identification, in my case I used passport and driving licence, um, and then sending that off with the applicable £55 fee. Now, in my case, because this scooter is in 1962, it's... Um, not required that I have either MOT or um, road tax. It comes under the historic vehicle classification. Um, pre-78 for, uh, for the road tax and pre-79 for the um, MOT. So previously, when you were having a scooter that you, were, you didn't have a V5 for, you needed the V5, you would have to approach the DVLA with all your documents. You'd need to get it insured because you need to get it taxed because you need to get it MOT'd. Um, then take it probably to an inspection centre. You'd have to do that on something like this, which is pre-79, pre-78 um, for, the, for the road tax and the MOT. This is a 62 model, so I didn't need tax or MOT or insurance in order to get my V5. I just sent off those documents that I've just been through with the fee, and um, I was then alerted by the uh, DVLA that they would be sending out an SGS inspector just to inspect the vehicle to make sure it is as um, I'd put forward in the documentation. I think that, and I don't know this for certain, but I'm thinking that if you have your scooter MOT'd as part of your registration process, because yours is post 79 and it needs MOT'ing, then um, that perhaps might reduce your chances of needing an SGS inspection because effectively I assume that the um, MOT inspector is doing the job of the inspector. So in the absence of this one uh, not needing an MOT or, in, or um, road tax, they sent out an SGS inspector. Now it's a visual inspection. He doesn't care if his scooter runs or not as long as it is complete. So um, I knew I was going to go on to put this target twin engine in, but for the purposes of the inspection, I just wanted to get a V5 document, knowing that once I'd got that, I could then go on to update the document later, which is a far easier process than fitting the target twin engine now and trying to explain it all to the DVLA. So I put in a standard 150 engine, I put the panels on, everything was here, the scooter was complete, it didn't run. Um, he comes in, he takes the panels off, looks at your frame number, looks at your engine number, 
um, checks the scooters and asks you a couple of questions, i.e., is it complete? Yes. Does it run? No. Why not? And it could be for any reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is. You could say, well, there's no petrol in it. But the fact is, is the reason it doesn't run shouldn't be because there's a component missing, because then it's not complete. So as long as the scooter's complete and your frame number and uh, engine number, you know, check out with what you've provided the information for the DVLA, he just ticks his box, and a couple of weeks later, you get your um, V5 document and can have a number plate made up, which I now have. Um, all the information of how to fill those forms in and the entire process in more detail, I've actually just done in this edition of the magazine, which this is the subscriber copy which arrived with me today. Um, it'll be out on the newsstands uh, next Thursday. Um, this is the March 2019 edition. Um, I say subscribers will probably get this this weekend and it'll be out on the newsstands on Thursday. So if you want to know how to fill out all these forms and a bit more detail about the registration process, I've actually gone into that in depth in that article. So you can check that out in the magazine. So that's the registration process. Um, I've had this engine in and out a couple of times, just dry fitting it. Obviously it's a Targa twin engine, it's the 275cc. Um, I wanted to know how it all married up with the um, the rear struts and was it going to foul on these bits, how much did I need to trim off my footboards, so on and so forth. So this engine's been in and out a couple of times. Obviously the engine mounts are a bit wider so there's a spacer to fit in, um, a wider offset um, rear rim to accommodate the different width of the engine and so on for alignment purposes. Um, so I'm just really now uh, starting to get going with this because I had to wait for the whole registration process to get through let alone the fact that I've only just erected this shed and I didn't have any heating or light to work on either. But that's all sorted now, the shed's fully functional, the V5's taken care of, I can finally start getting on with fitting all the stuff that I've, I've got to go on this. So that's the current update on the Targa Twin, where we're at with the chassis, the registration process, the shed's in place and uh, we have light and electricity and if you want to read up in more detail on the Nova situation and the registration V5 situation then uh, just grab this month's magazine um, and that's this video wrapped up and in a couple of the other videos we're now going to go through some of the components that we will be fitting to this uh, scooter just so you can see what we've got to look forward to in the magazine.